All right, so it's time for another exercise here. So this exercise is going to cover everything that we've talked about as far as CSS selectors. So we're not going to actually build um, any sort of complete, cohesive website that's coming next. We're going to make a little blog uh, in the next exercise. This one is more of a traditional exercise with, with a bunch of problems, very short problems. Basically, I'm giving you um, a bunch of HTML. It looks like this. It doesn't really mean anything. In fact, all the text here is from a website called Hipster Ipsum. It's, it's uh, just like Lorem Ipsum, except it's using hipster words like farm to table and locavore and Portland and Williamsburg. So it's just a bunch of words. Um, so the point is, it doesn't matter what's here. What does matter, though, is this file, the CSS file that I also gave you. And it's empty aside from a bunch of comments. And these comments give you instructions for what you need to do. So up top is the most important line. Style the HTML elements according to the following instructions. Do not alter the existing HTML to do this. Write only CSS. So that means don't touch this file. This is here just as starter code for you. This is the HTML. You're going to do everything in CSS. So you cannot go in here and add new IDs or add new classes or add new elements. Just keep it exactly how it is. So the way that it works, there are different problems. So the first one, give the body element a background of this color. We would just write the code you know, to select the body and then give it a color like this. So I'll give you that one for free. I'm sure most of you could have done that. Um, same goes for all of these. So make all H1s, make all H2s, do something, make all Li elements. One note, some of these will ask you to use a property that we haven't actually covered yet. And that's deliberate. Um, I just want you to have some experience with some properties that we haven't explicitly talked about in videos yet. So in that case, here's one, make all the paragraphs that are nested inside of divs 25 pixel font. And then in parentheses, I give you the code that you need. So font size 25 PX. So there's a few more of those. Here's one and here's one more. Make all checked checkboxes have a left margin of 50 pixels. So you need to use margin left 50 pixels. And it's okay that you don't know exactly what that does. That's coming in the next few videos. So one other note here, these uh, get a little bit harder as they go along. So up top, they start with just an element selector. And then we talk about classes and IDs. And then we start to talk about some of those other selectors that we mentioned in the last video. So make all of the paragraphs that are nested inside of divs. Make only inputs with type text have a gray background. And then things like give the second paragraph inside the third div a five pixel white border. So the good news is that all of the selectors that you need to use here can be found in the 30 CSS selectors you must memorize article, and you can easily find them online, and we've covered most of them. There are a few, though, that we didn't cover in the last video, and those are under the bonus challenges section. So that includes things like making all checked checkboxes have a left margin. So there's a way to select the checked checkboxes. Or here's another one, make the first letter of the element with ID special green and 100 pixel font size. So there's a way to select just the first letter. Make the H1 elements color change to blue when hovered over and make the A tag elements that have been visited gray. So remember an A tag is a link and you've probably seen this before. You can change or sites will change the color of a link that you've been to compared to a link that you haven't been to before. So there's a way of writing that with CSS. So as always, in the next video, we're going to go over a solution. We're going to go bit by bit. Um, but I recommend you give this a shot. Go as far as you can. Try all of these bonuses. Um, one thing I didn't mention here, this one is slightly different. Make the label elements all uppercase without changing the HTML. So the selector here is actually simple. We're just selecting all label elements. But the property is a little challenging. There's a way using CSS to make something all uppercase without actually changing the text in the HTML. You can do it through CSS, just like you would change the color or the border. You can change a property that will make it uppercase or lowercase. All right, so I'll see you in the next video.